hardly a day goes by without uh, a police officer in the city of Mobile confronting someone who, during a confrontation, they realize that this person is maybe mentally challenged or, or has some mental issues. And how we deal with that and how we've trained to do that is, you know, that we've used best practices, uh, but it's always a challenge when one of our officers has a confrontation like that. And over the years, we've been very fortunate that uh, to have um, Alter Point, knowing that, that we have a place that we can call upon and individuals and personnel that we can call upon to give those who are mentally challenged or have mental issues, uh, to give them the help they need. But the problem has always been that it's kind of after the fact, after there's been an arrest or after they've been in court. And, you know, there's got to be a better way. And so when we continue to say, you know, if you continue to do things the same way that you've been doing it, you're going to get the same results. And really, we're looking for a different result. And so it was kind of with that thought in mind that our Office of Grant Management and researching grants that are available, you know, to cities, you know, reached out and made a proposal for a grant and found out in October that we, that the city of Mobile through MPD was the recipient of a $742,000 grant. And that money will be divided, uh, about six, $620,000 will go to Alta Point, Alta Point uh, 61 to USA uh, to do research, and the Mobile Police Department to also do more extensive training the, the key to this, though, is that within this grant is an opportunity to have a pilot program where there will be personnel uh, that work for Alter Point that are trained to how to deal with uh, those who are mentally challenged. Uh, they actually will go on calls, on certain call, or be called upon to go with a policeman, you know, to assist them possibly before an arrest is made. Uh, so that they get and have, have that intervention early so that hopefully we handle it uh, in a better fashion than maybe we would if we didn't have uh, those qualified personnel available. So we are, we are very excited about this. Uh, as I mentioned to you, this is a, a pilot program. And the hope is, is that if we can, sh through the data, show that we're getting uh, different results or better results, um, then we can talk uh, the Department of Justice into, you know, re-upping this uh, grant because it's a two-year grant. And we're very optimistic that we'll be able to show that. And, you know, what does this mean for the city of Mobile? Ultimately, for our citizens, it gives us an opportunity to better protect them, you know, from those that may uh, harm them because, again, of mental issues. Uh, it's been a long time coming to find something like this, and as I said, we're very excited about it. But the key is going to be uh, what does Alter Point bring to the table to this? And so there's nobody better qualified to explain that than Turk Schlesinger, who I think everybody in the city of Mobile uh, knows the great work that he has done uh, with his organization. And uh, after Turk makes his remarks, and he'll be followed by Public Safety Director uh, Lawrence Batiste. So, Turk. Um, thank you, Mayor. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, I, I can tell you we really appreciate your focus on the criminal justice and the mentally ill. Um, your administration has been fantastic. Um, searching out these grants and trying to find these grants have really been helpful for us to give us the funding that we need to step in and help with the criminal justice and the mentally ill. Um, I have a startling statistic for you. Um, since October of 2020, we have done 6,000 mental health screenings in Metro Jail. Um, since, since 2019, we've done 21,000 screenings in Metro Jail. So if you think that mentally ill people coming in contact with law enforcement is a problem, then th that is understated. So we've got a major problem. This grant goes a long way in helping us address that problem. Um, as the mayor said, this is a mental health and law enforcement collaboration, but it, it's, it really takes care of four specific areas. One, I think the mayor had mentioned, is that um, we're here to train officers. So we're training them on how to respond um, to, to a, a mental health call out in the community. And number two, it lets Alta Point co-respond 
with those officers into the community. That means let a clinician go and help de-escalate the situation. And number three, we will work in, um, in the jails more intensely taking care of people who have serious mental illnesses to help them get stabilized, uh, help them get back out and follow them up on their medicines. And number four, really identify. We have super utilizers, we call them. People who have serious mentally, uh, that are seriously mentally ill, that have constant interaction with law enforcement, constant interactions with emergency departments. We're really here to help early identification of those individuals and try to prevent them um, from, from getting involved in those areas. So we're just glad to be here. Um, I'm glad to also um, introduce um, Public Safety Director Batiste uh, to come up here and, and speak a little bit more about that. Good morning uh, to the Mayor, uh, Trey. Uh, we are, we're certainly MPD posture in dealing with uh, the mental health is, is one that we're grateful, one that Mayor has allowed us to uh, extend our resources to partner uh, with Alta Point as well as the partnership that we have with uh, University of South Alabama in securing this grant. Uh, what it does for us at MPD, it, again, it, it allows us to continue to be on the leading edge or the cutting edge of uh, best practices of what's working uh, in the area of mental health. It affords us the opportunity to make sure that we are providing training to our officers, uh, enhanced training to our officers in the area of, of mental health. Uh, and it goes a step beyond that. It goes into the idea of how do we create mental health teams that allow us to be able to respond uh, even more professionally as we move forward. Uh, as I've gone off to different training classes I've seen in other communities where they've had mental health teams that, that respond and where, where it really has a real impact on our community is this, it deals with pre-incarceration, <clears throat> not post-incarceration. And so the idea is if we can address and identify problems on the front end, uh, if one, we limit the number of people that we are putting in our, into our uh, judicial system and into our jails. The other part of it is, is that uh, it allows us to uh, deal with trauma that's specifically related to mental illness as a result of, specifically related to mental illness as opposed to it being dealing with particularly criminality. And so the focus is to try to make sure that we don't make our uh, people that in our community that have serious mental health issues uh, become criminal uh, when we can address the problem through triaging it through the partnership and the collaboration that we've created with Alter Point, making sure that we've uh, done the things that we can do to, to, to deal with the trauma on the front end rather than try to deal with it on the back end, stabilize our, our, our individuals and then figure out what we need to do with them next. And so we're grateful as, as a department to have an opportunity to, to partner in this collaboration. Uh, we believe that the enhanced training that we'll provide our officers will be most beneficial to our community as a whole. And as we pilot the program of uh, co-responding with our officers and our mental health professionals, uh, again, I think that uh, the real winner in this is the, the entire city of Mobile and the county uh, in the adjoining counties around us. Thank you, Director. <clears throat> Turk, if you can come back and direct, I'll come a little closer because I take questions. I feel certain that uh, that in some situations you're going to uh, have maybe the uh, more precise answer. So uh, I'll open it up for, for questions at this time. Yes. We said, you said clinicians would, would be part of a co-response team okay. with police officers. Are you talking about counselors? Are you talking about psychiatrists? What, what are you talking about when you say clinicians? Well, when we talk about clinicians uh, co-responding with the officers, we're talking about um, a master's um, prepared person, probably in the areas of social work, um, licensed professional counselor, uh, marriage and family counseling, um, but somebody who's master's trained in, in counseling and also trained in de-escalation of these types of incidents. Stay there. So, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Several. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> you said it's a two-year grant. Two year. Two-year grant. If DOJ doesn't, if it, let's say it's successful, you find that successful, DOJ doesn't go forward with with re-upping the grant. Could you see? Could you see? Uh, 
uh, funds coming out of the police budget to, to kind of pay, continue to pay for this program or anything like that? So it's like any new program that we would have in the police department, you know, that uh, when we find out that something's working, hopefully if initially it was uh, funded by a grant, but we realize it works, then typically we start trying to find money uh, to support it internally. So, you know, not knowing how we would do that at this point, but I'm sure that if it's successful, we would point toward that. And then, and then the clinicians that are going to be, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth. It just popped okay. in my head as, I, as, as, uh, yeah. as I'm listening. Uh, the clinicians that are going to be on scene, that are going to co-respond, uh, how is that going to work? Are the police going to call? Police will call all to point when they get in a situation where they're like, oh, this, this gentleman or lady is mentally ill. Let's get, let's get the clinicians on the scene. How is that going to work? Or are they just always going to be a, a situation where they might always rise? Right. We have, we're going to have dedicated um, uh, master's level clinicians to be on call um, for the precincts whenever they have any, any of these mental health encounters that they feel like that we can help intervene. Now, I have a, a kind of a story here, and I started in 1998 with Alta Point, and I remember um, one of the advocates telling us that there was 11,000 mental health calls with the police department that year. And could we do something? And I, I, I know I've been with Alta Point 22 years, and we've, we've constantly looked at ways that we can, can fill gaps. Um, this has been one of those gaps that we have not been able to fill until now. Um, this initiative with, with the BJA grant, but also we've got other initiatives that are going to be supporting this grant that we haven't even talked about yet today. We have a new crisis center that um, the Commissioner of Mental Health um, has dedicated to the Mobile area. It'll take care of seven counties. It'll be 24-7 urgent care. Um, it'll be able to be kind of like that um, primary care urgent care center, um, but also it has 23-hour hold beds where police officers, if we identify somebody who's in crisis, they can actually bring them to us instead of going to jail. Is that the clinic at uh, State Avenue? No, this is going to. This is a clinic that we are opening on uh, right off of Gordon Smith Drive. Okay. Okay, and it's uh, it's about a thirty-two thousand square foot building that we already had. I know we were looking for a new location, but um, you know, land is tight in Mobile, so um, we have used one of our existing locations. Okay. Sorry to get this. That's all off track. I apologize. Um, the the money is going to go to Alta Point, the police department. And who else? University, uh, USA. USA. Their part is research. Well, the training for the police, the, the, you, did you break down how much goes to each? Yeah, 60,000 to the police, 61,000 to USA, and uh, 640, 642 to um, Alta Point. And there's probably a one digit in there that doesn't add up to 742, so. <laughs> you do the rounding. Right. Can you talk about why it's important to address these mental health issues before these individuals are, you know, in the justice system, like incarcerated? Yeah, there's so many of these calls, and, and, and the um, public safety director, Batiste, knows this firsthand, but there's so many calls that are type of nuisance calls. They're, they're public trespassing, they're in, indecent exposure. There's a whole bunch of different things that happen with people who are seriously mentally ill. Those individuals aren't out there just thinking about how they can create terrible crimes. Their mental health is really impairing them to ability where they don't really understand at that point what's going on. If we can get them into treatment and we can get them, probably most of these individuals are people that we already know in our system, and we can get them back on medicine, you'd be amazed at how quickly they respond, how quickly they can come back into being just like the rest of us. The, the biggest problem with mentally ill people is the fact that the most serious mentally ill people don't like the side effects of medicine. They become non-compliant. So what we want to do is make sure we get them back into compliance and back into being a regular citizen in our, in our city. Uh, Mr. Pete, as a police officer, you've had many years as <coughs> a police officer, can you anecdotally tell us about one particular incident that stands out in your mind that you responded to? Uh, I'm sure there were many, but something that helps us really make this hit home. You know, I guess for me is maybe not so much a, as a police officer, but it, when I served as the chief juvenile pro probation officer with the youth court. And oftentimes <clears throat> we would have young people that for one reason or another had been diagnosed with, with some level of, 
of, of mental illness. And then, of course, the parents go home and they self-diagnose and they change whatever the plan happens to be for getting the child on recovery. And the next thing you know that the child has run away from home again and they're out on the street being extremely promiscuous because uh, you know, they don't want to follow what the, what the doctors have, have told them they need to do. And, and that's often what happens when someone decides that they're going to go against you know, the, the prescribed treatment plan to deal with the issues that they may have. And so I, you know, I've seen that happen time and time again uh, with our young people in our community. Uh, not as much uh, from, from my perspective uh, with working with, with some of the adults, but, but it happens enough that we need to make sure that as we, we, we plan this process out in our communities, uh, that people know that, one, if they let law enforcement officers know or let, let 911 in particular, they can update their screens on, on, their, uh, on, on their homes to let law enforcement know that uh, there's somebody potentially that has a mental illness in that home. So as we respond, uh, and particularly as we look at the process of co-responding, uh, we're better prepared to do that on the front end than rather than on the back end. The other part, again, is the overcrowding of our jails simply comes about a lot of times, again, because of some of the nuisance calls that we end up going on as a result of mental illness. And if we can treat those on the front end, if we can stabilize those, those individuals on the front end and not incarcerate them, uh, we limit uh, what we're pouring into our justice system and we provide those, uh, those individuals with a level of treatment that they can move forward with uh, in their lives. What will this police training, enhanced police training look like and what kind of training do, they, do police already get when it comes to mental health? Currently, you know, our, our law enforcement officers, every year we deal with, with uh, some mental health training. We try to learn how to de-escalate situations in particular how do you deal with somebody that you know you think that may have uh, some some form of mental, mental health you don't really want to go in in some cases and put hands on them because touch sometimes can cause them to react in a different way so we talk about different signs of, of things that they can look for when they're dealing with somebody with with mental illness the enhanced version of what we're hoping to see here is uh, not only do we uh, not only do we teach officers how to deal with these situations. But we identify officers within our uh, current uh, structure that may have a passion uh, to maybe to respond to these type of calls uh, on a regular basis. That's what we're seeing around the country and some of the other areas that they are identifying officers within their command that has a passion to work in that particular area that you know, has the skill set and uh, develop teams, again, in every precinct to be able to respond to to all, uh, all of these calls that we may get. But again, MPD is gonna be working uh, with the community by creating a series of, uh, of uh, community, community meetings to try to talk to people in those communities about uh, people, family members in, in their families that may have mental health and the things that they can do to help alert law enforcement before they respond to a call for service involving one of their family members. Um. This could be for all three of you or one of you, whoever wants to answer it. Um, the, le the Alabama legislature earlier this session approved a mental health court for Baldwin County. Um, I understand that there is a push to do the same in Mobile County. It's getting some resistance from uh, one or a few of the judges uh, upstairs. Just real quickly, how do, you guys, how do you guys feel about mental health courts? Is that anybody? I really, I really have no insight into that. I can, I, can, I can say that, that Alta Point is already um, working with um, many municipal and circuit courts on um, whenever they have somebody who has a serious mental illness in terms of some kind of a, a um, diversion of their sentence in order to receive treatment. And so we're actually doing that in a, in a kind of a way that is not specifically tied to a certain court, but we're doing that with multiple courts, uh, yeah. multiple judges. We had a, um, a grant probably around, excuse me, we had a grant about 12 years ago or so that was for um, mental health and criminal justice. Uh, that grant actually helped us start that program. It's, it's what you were talking about earlier. It was one of those grants where you get it for three years and it eventually goes away. Um, I couldn't tell Sheriff Cochran that this was going to go away, so we continued to do it. And uh, it's been very effective. Uh, it's, it's a, we call it a jail diversion grant. Um, but we work with individuals who are in the jail who 
who need to get help on bail. A lot of times someone who has a mental illness, when they go into jail, they don't have the ability to really communicate with, with individuals to get out on bail as timely as somebody who doesn't have a mental health problem. And so we're there to help them get out. We go through, through with them through the um, court system and we help them get into a, um, a jail diversion program that we have at Alta Point. Okay. And uh, last question for me, I'm, uh, I'm done. <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, do you have any idea of the number of personnel you'll have available on call or is it too early to say? It's right now, I mean, I, I can't say because I don't know the specifics that was written into the grant. Sure, sure. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank y'all. When does this thing begin? When does this start? Um, when does that, when, you, when will we actually be I, kicking it off? I don't know the, actually the start date of it. Do you know? We, 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 yeah, we'll get it. Okay. Yeah. okay, we'll follow up. Thank y'all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you. Well done.